In this video, we're going to talk about Wonderware Historian Insight, which is a tool used to extract information from your Wonderware Historian. Specifically, this is for an on-premise historian. We also have this same type of tool that can be run on our cloud historian, but what we're talking about here today is your on-premise historian that you have running at your plant sites that we can install this software and be able to extract information. We can create some dashboards, we can look at trends, we can drill into the data, we can extract information. So it's a very easy to use tool, purely web-based. I just point my web browser to the historian and I can log in and start looking at data or call up pre-existing dashboards that I have created. So when you install this version of the Wonderware Historian Server 2014 R2 Service Pack 1 Patch 01, this enables these components. Then you can browse in from your web browser and start taking a look at your data. So let's take a look at the tool in action. So as you can see on the screen, I just have my Google Chrome browser opened. I'm going to go to my bookmark, which is pointing to the Wonderware Historian Insight. In this case, it's just pointing to local host and a port number here. What it's going to do is going to bring up a dashboard that I previously have configured. It's going to look at my, my station pressures that I have configured. It's going to look at my station temperatures. So these dashboards are, are all drillable, configurable. So if I want to drill into my station pressures, I can drill into those and kind of see a little more information about those tags that I have picked previously in this dashboard. As you can see, it's showing my current value, it's showing my trend, which way the data is trending at this point of time. It also gives me a little thumbnail of the data in a little trend format here. And I can drill into one of these trends and, and see some information about that. It gives me the time frame. I can drill in and I can see it pop open a trend about that data. So if I click on my gallery button here, it's going to show me what are the other options I have for displaying my data? I can display that information in a bar chart as seen here. I can go back to that summary chart that we saw. I can go into my trend. So here's a trend of the data. You can see if I move my cursor over the data points, it shows me the actual value at that specific time. I can go pick the time. If I want to go say look at the last hour's worth of data, there's the last hours. I can look at today. Um, you can look at yesterday, not a whole lot going on yesterday, but I can go look at, say, three days or seven days. So I can zoom in and zoom out of my data as I need. I can pick a custom time if I would like. So if I click custom, it's going to allow me to enter in a time. So if I enter 1230 and I apply that, you can see that it's going to go out and recapture the data and display it for that last half hour worth of information. The other charts that I have here are column charts, so I can see this in a column type format. I can go pick, say, the last average over the last hour, minimum, maximum, sum, the last value that I have. So a lot of different ways I can slice and dice the data to look at it in different formats. I can look at the data in this summary grid. It tells me the information in a tabular type format, again, showing the statistic that I want, min, max, average, last type of information. There is an XY scatter plot if I want to look at data that way. So I can choose that and I can choose my X axis. Let me see. I want to take these pressures against my flow. It's going to plot that in an XY type format. There is another grid that I have down here. I can look at something called a diagnostic grid. It's showing me all the values, my last value, my total, my min, my max, my average. Shows me my quality, whether I'm getting good information from my PLC. So it's just a way to look at the data in a tabular format. With any of these displays, I can very easily extract that information and look at it in Excel. So if I want to take a look at this information right here, and I want to take it and I want to download the data, it's going to download it directly to Excel. I can pop open Excel, and there's the data that I'm pretty much looking at on my screen in an Excel format that I can use and put that in another report or email that to someone else. Um, it's information that's available down to Excel. So just like my data grid that I had previously, I'm in the trend client. And if I want to extract that information, all the information you see on the screen, if you want to extract that to a data format in Excel, I can download that data to a CSV. It's going to put the data into Excel. So now I can see there's the all the values that uh, were displayed on the actual trend. But now it's in a tabular Excel format that I can take this data and do some further analysis. So we saw how we can export that data to Excel. If I wanted to share this web page with someone else, I can go here and click on my sharing tab, copy this link, 
and then you know email that to someone or give someone else that link they can go to their web browser paste it into their browser and they can see the same content on their web page which is logging into the same server if you will another thing we can do is we can actually share that information via an embedded web page so if I want to go here and copy this link which allows me to take this snippet of code drop it into another web browser another application that you have which could link to this dashboard we saw how we can download the data to Excel we also have the button here which let me save this dashboard for future use so I'm back to my main dashboard if I want to add some additional content to this we'll go through that process so I know I have some flow signals I want to add to my dashboard so the way I do that is I'm going to clear my content here and I'm going to go basically find those flow signals so I'm going to hit my dot flow variables and it came across it sees 12 flow signals so you can see all those listed here you can see my engineering units are listed over on the side I'm going to go pick the signals that I want specifically from that they're basically I have some additional five minute 15 minute type average signals that are defined but I'm going to keep my main flow signals here and add them to the dashboard so I'm going to pick my main signals um, I'm going to go back to my uh, visualization gallery I'm going to pick my summary chart so I'm going to take these and I'm going to add these to my dashboard so what I need to do is basically I need to save this for later and I'm going to give it a you know station flows and I need to add a keyword that's going to link it to my dashboard so my dashboard has a keyword previously defined that is called my station hit enter and now this will link it to that dashboard just by typing in that keyword called my stations when I save that it's saved and I go back to my content and I go to my stations because of this keyword my stations here it automatically linked my flows into this dashboard it's that simple to create these dashboards by adding different content let's add an additional pane to our dashboard we really haven't talked to this point about discrete signals so let's add some pump runtime status signals to show how that looks on our dashboard so I'm going to clear my content I'm going to go find those pump status signals by look, searching for that keyword pump so it found these four signals so you can see I have pump one through four it's showing me the status tells me how many transitions I have if I go to the last hour it's showing me I have you know the different transitions across that time how many times it was true how many times it was false so I want to make sure I have all those tags picked here but I think the most useful tool that we have here is the time and state chart so if I look at this time and state chart it's telling me how long the pump has been in the running condition if I hover over it it'll tell me it's been on for say 42 minutes it's been off for 17 minutes so it gives me a good idea of the status of some discrete signals whether it's pump cycle times or whatever discrete signal I have out there I can display that information in a dashboard also so to add these to my main dashboard page I need to save these for later and I'm gonna call it pump pump runs and I'm gonna add my keyword my station which is gonna link it to my dashboard I save that now I go to my dashboard of my stations you can see now I have my pump runs are on my dashboard so with that that's all I'm going to do today but you can see how easy it is to extract information from the Wonderware historian into Wonderware insight by creating dashboard trends or charts whatever you want and publish them to a web page or make them available to other users in your plant via the web interface well, thank you for watching today. If you'd like to have some more information about Historian Insight or any other products that we sell, you can contact me at the email address below or contact your local in-source account executive. Thanks again.